Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Warren Bennett. We've got Trev down behind me, currently eating a bit of the garden, um, but he's enjoying this February sun we've got. So I'm gonna take advantage of it and show you a video of how to introduce more snap into your golf swing. So snap is just another word for release, but release in the right way, because any exercise, which I'm gonna give you, there's a right and a wrong way to do it. Um, so I'm gonna show you the details of how this can give you more um, distance, more compression, a better strike, especially with your irons. So I'm just gonna get the back camera set up, get Trev off the mat as per usual in the way, and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, everyone, layering more snap into your golf swing. Now snap is just another word for getting rid of this angle, getting some compression, and this is with every club, but especially with an iron, because 99% of the time with an iron, the ball's gonna be on the floor, apart from par threes where you've got a bit of help with the tee. But 99% of the time, every iron shot you're gonna hit, the ball's gonna be on the floor. And as we know, that's gonna be, that's really difficult to kind of, if you're in the wrong place, to make sure that ball gets hit first. So making proper contact, and making proper contact is ball first and then divot after, not the other way around. So if you're fatting and thinning the ball, this is gonna be a fantastic exercise for you. Right, so I'm not gonna address that ball, but I'm just gonna address behind it here, but I want that yellow line for reference now, the yellow ball for reference. Now, as you can see, the yellow line is up there. Now, what I'd like you to do is make your backswing and then stop. It's not even halfway down, it's kind of where your hands are above the ball. So you can see there, my hands are above that yellow line, even kind of my butt of the club is probably ahead of that yellow line there. So really this exercise is delaying your release as long as you can. There's only so much range of motion your wrists have got, you're not gonna be able to do it too much. Some, some of you might be able to get it up in the air a little bit more, but it doesn't matter if it's slightly down, because obviously some people's wrists are a bit more flexible than others. So keeping your hands into the ball as long as you can, even past the ball with the club up in the air. Now the exercise is just now getting rid of that release that you can see the angle between my right forearm and the shaft and my left forearm and the shaft. So now you wanna try and get rid of that as quick as possible. You can see now I want you to kind of do all the work with the club head. So you can see now, because I've delayed this, my hands are kind of in, on top of the golf ball, and now even just a slight movement forward in my hands, but most of all, I'm just getting this in. So because the club face is up in the air, it's gonna now strike the ball because my hands are so far ahead of the club head, and my hands are so far on top of the ball that any release now is gonna be ahead of the ball, if not on top of the ball. So it's an absolute beautiful exercise. You can see there, I'm just keeping my head still. You can introduce a little bit of kick in with your right knee, so off the inside of your shoe there. But most importantly, from the behind view as well, you can see the more delayed you can be, the more open, a bit more gap between my right arm and my left arm as well. And I'm gonna give you a little exercise about your right arm um, a little bit further into the video. So you can see from the behind, or from the front view I mean, Get your hands above the ball as you can look down. So it's past that on top of that yellow line and then from there, snap it. So you're not really releasing from back here. For the exercise, you're releasing literally as your hands are on top of the ball. Keep your right arm in, keep your elbow in, touching your belly and then kick and hit release. You're gonna hit balls like this in a little bit. So, you, so what you're not doing, you're not flicking. Your hands are actually still moving forward. You can do it with one hand. So left hand is always a good one, but a little bit harder. But you can see what it is from the front view there. If I had a glove and logo on my glove there, you can see it's pointing completely at that front camera. And then slow motion, it's actually now going to rotate, but my front of my wrist is still flat. There's going to be no cupping whatsoever. You can keep the angle, but you don't want to then flick it. You want to keep your hands going and there's a little rotation movement. So there's that snap. You can see you're not really doing a lot, but the club is really going to introduce some snap and most importantly, compression, because that club head is going to be on the way down. Behind camera, you're going to see when your hands are above the ball here, you'd like the club head, if you can, a little bit back and behind me. Not a long way, but you don't want the club out here as well. That's too steep. So. Worst case scenario, you want the club kind of parallel in front of my hands, you can see there from the behind view, but 
If you're a slice of the ball, get the club behind you even more. If you're a hook of the ball, I'd get it level. Nice and small and gentle to start with. This isn't a distance exercise for this drill. So backswing, stop. You can see my elbow is right inside. It's touching me, so it's not away from me. It's not straight. My right arm is actually still bent now. And then we're gonna get rid of that angle. As you can see, it's just a little kind of punch at the moment. You're not making a follow through yet. So you're really kind of just getting rid of that. Head nice and still, everyone. You can kick your right knee in a little bit and get rid of it. Get rid of it. I'd say it's a better exercise with a practice swing because anything ball there, you kind of get into it a bit of bad habit. So if you want to just kind of get a little bit of AstroTurf down, get your hands above an imaginary ball there. It's going to stand to the side a little bit. And then even to slow motion. You can see my hands are going forward and they're rotating. You can see my left wrist, what it's doing there. It's staying really firm. And there's that impact position. Hands are ahead of the club head and the ball. Knees kicking in and head is over, hasn't moved forward. From the behind view, you can see kind of a little bit of my left arm there, and right arm still inside. I'm gonna give you a right arm exercise a little bit later. Okay, so let's do a little bit more drill work. So you can work nice and slow and short. Hands are above that yellow line. Delay it as long as you can. Small little pumps, and then release it. Into that impact position. You don't have to move forward yet. Keep everything kind of back. Clap head behind my hands, but my hands are above the ball. Delay it as long as I can. You can see my shoulders are kind of in the way still here. I haven't opened up. So it's a great exercise for sequence. And then from there, I'm gonna let this backswing uh, follow through go a little bit more now. Snap through. Now, if you hit balls on a range, you're gonna see quite a low strike because obviously it's exaggerated. This isn't pretty much how you want to be when you hit a ball. You don't wanna have that much angle above the ball. You're probably gonna hit kind of halfway up the ball. So you're gonna hit kind of a squeezy shot but that's the whole idea, to give you a little bit of exaggeration so when you come back to your normal swing, you can get a little bit more ball on that club face. This is exaggerated, but I like exaggeration, and you'll never fat it ever in your life. So keep it back, it's not over the top, not outside. Keep it back, you can have it straight if you like. I'm gonna go a little bit more inside because I like shallow. Okay, so you can see here with this practice, with this shot, I'm gonna kick my right knee in a little bit, my head stays there. I'm gonna just get rid of that angle. I'm gonna let that follow through go a little bit. You'd be amazed, oh, well, I'll hit four balls now. If you hit 10 balls like that, now 10 doesn't sound a lot. If you stood there and do 10 of these shots, you'd be amazed about how, how much better it is on the 10th ball than the first one. One more exercise, I'm gonna show you how to layer it into a normal swing now. So backswing hands above the ball, if not past it. You can see with the yellow line there. So you can see the angle I've got between the shaft and my left arm and the shaft and my right arm. So much delay there. How am I gonna hit behind the ball? If I just kick slightly and get my hands moving forward, head still, and you can see I'm gonna be in this really strong position. My left wrist has rotated. It hasn't just stopped and flicked. There's a little rotation going on there. Beautiful, love doing. Even just a little exercise like that, folks. You can just stand there, hold your club out in front of you, and you can keep your head still. You can see how much speed there is down there. Just snapping that in. All you're doing is kind of, it's a wrist motion only. Right, so normal swing now, so you can delay this as long as you can, and you're feeling the same feeling. Now, obviously, when, when the force of the club and the speed of the club, you won't be able to do it like that. So that's the, ben that's the benefit of stopping because there's no force and pressure on that shaft. Okay, so when you layer it yourself, you can just kind of take a little bit of speed off it because that's why I say about speed. If you kind of take a bit of speed off it, you can delay it and keep it a little bit more. It's like, it's like a bridge between normal swing and the exercise. So keeping a bit of pace off it kind of is the bridge between the two. Okay, so I'm gonna do a backswing. I'm not gonna stop this time, but I'm gonna try and feel like I'm gonna swing through this position, my hands past that line. Okay, you'll see this with the slow motion. That really felt like I can press down on that ball then. It really felt like it anyway. Obviously, if you're hitting off grass, you'd be able to tell more because you can be a divot off it, obviously, and you can see where the entry is. Okay, we're gonna go again. So I would recommend just doing practice swings feel like you're going to just swing through that 
position there. How much delay there is. Much, even my hands past that yellow line. If I release there, this is what these top pros do. Look at the exaggeration that. I'm turning that eight iron into a seven iron and there's that compression, that boring flight as they call it. Especially if you're into a strong wind, that's how you keep it low. You don't keep it low by leaning into it. You keep it low by getting your hands into it and rotating and that compression snap down there. Okay, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. It's the same thing. Oh, that felt really nice actually. So I'm not practicing now, but just doing these exercises for me all helps as well. So like I said, it doesn't really matter what standard you are. This is an elite feeling as well, but this is something even a beginner can do. So I would teach a beginner to get into this position or any standard, especially someone who's slicing, getting in this position. So forget about backswing, just get in this position and just learn to get rid of that angle. Get rid of that angle by doing the correct left wrist feel because you've got to keep that back of that left wrist straight. Guaranteed your hands to be ahead of the ball impact because if you've still got delay here, there's no way that you can, you're gonna do that. So it's an absolute beauty of an exercise to kind of get that compression, get your hands ahead of the ball impact. I'm gonna be doing an impact video in, a, in a, maybe in a week or two's time, but it's the most important position in golf impact. So it's guarantees for you to have your hands ahead of the ball impact because you've still got angle as your hands are above, as you can see there with the line. And then just release it. And then you're layering that into a normal swing as best you can. Now, obviously, like I said, once you start introducing normal speed and this kind of centrifugal force on this club, it's gonna get thrown out. You're not gonna be able to stop it. There's only so much wrist strength you've got it can't hold kind of 80, 90 miles an hour, whatever you've got here with, with the club. See if I slow this swing down, let's see if I can get into this impact position that I'm showing. So little summary, hands above, club behind me, but still up in the air as best as you can, as much as your wrists will allow. Doesn't matter if it's slightly like this, but get it up as much as you can. Keep your hands ahead of the ball on top of it, and then just get rid of that angle. Little kick of the knee, head still, and you're keeping that back of that left wrist firm. You're not just flicking that hand. Right, okay, let's see if I can get into that impact position. I'll slow this one down and pause it impact. Felt pretty good. Definitely felt like ball and turf. I'm gonna show you a little exercise to do with your right arm because a lot of people who are throwers of the club, getting the club outside here, their right arm gets disconnected away from their body on the way down. So I'd like you to make your backswing. So whatever your backswing looks like, take your left hand off, Put your hand on top of your bicep, as you can see. Now I want you to feel like you're kind of keeping that hand, pushing that elbow into your side. So up to the top, a little bit of room. As you can see there, my elbow is away from my body. I don't want it in to start with. So get your elbow away from your body at the top of the backswing and then get your elbow in there whilst keeping the angle. As you can see there, keeping that in. If that elbow and that right arm is bent, it'll be easier for you to keep that angle. If that arm straightens, I don't think you can keep that angle with a straight arm. It's not gonna work, especially under speed anyway. So the best, the best way to get angle into this position is to keep that right arm bent, as you can see. I'm not straight. So keep that right arm bent. So up to the top, left hand on top of your bicep and pull in. And you can do a few of those exercises, but you've got to make sure, remember right and the wrong way, but to make sure there's some gap here at the top. You're not keeping it in to start with. So get your elbow out, pull in, get your elbow in. Out, in. You can see I'm not really doing anything with the angle. I've still got the same angle at the top of the backswing than I have into the impact zone there. You can see it's a little bit harder to keep the angle because obviously the club is much heavier, so it wants to drop a little bit. My wrist is hurting a little bit doing that. But you only need to do a few of these. It's a great exercise, just a kind of little pump lag drill. Pump lag drill. You can see my head stays still. Right, my right knee's kicking in a little bit towards my left toe just to help with it. Because if that stays on the floor, that's gonna be really difficult. So you wanna be ahead of the ball. And you can see with that exercise, my right hand gets ahead of that line, if not just on top of it. There we go. And then obviously after that, you release it. 
So snap is something you don't really feel, but with this exercise you definitely can work on it. And I would, you don't even need a golf club, you can just do it around the house. You can stand there and just snap. It's a really, really, really good exercise to introduce a little bit more speed and distance to your game. So remember everyone, this is with every club in your bag. So you don't change your golf swing, you just change your stance. So with a driver, obviously you're gonna be a little bit more off your left foot and a little bit more kind of right shoulder tilt there. But you, the feeling stays the same. You probably won't do it as much with a driver because you're less over the top of the ball and the golf club's going, foot, going quicker. So there's gonna be more force getting thrown out. With a wedge, it's gonna be a little bit easier because you're a little bit more on top of it and there's less speed of that club. So you'll be able to hold it a little bit more. So from so uh, now that. sunny UK, as you can see through the video, there's been a bit of intermittent cloud coming over. But from myself and Trev, Thank you very much for watching. If this is something of interest or the channel would be something of interest, I'd love you to have along as a subscriber. If you're a regular viewer, thank you very much for your uh, continued support. It's very, very much appreciated. And if you'd like to get in touch with me through social media, there's my social media pages um, through Instagram and Facebook only. Um, just search Warren Bennett Golf Academy. So thank you very much, everyone. So. I wish you well, wish you a good golfing week and please stay healthy on and off the golf course. And until the next time, we'll see you then from myself and Trev. Cheerio.